everybody. Today we're talking about Bohr's model of the atom. Very, very cool stuff what happens within the atom to the electron. The last chapter we kind of focused on what the atom looks like, where there's neutrons and protons inside the nucleus. This is all about what the electrons are doing outside the nucleus. So, if we imagine that this middle part of this structure is the nucleus, and all of these rings around the nucleus are energy levels. They're, they don't actually look like rings, but we're going to call them energy levels for now. The ground state, or stable place for the electron to be, and for instance, for Bohr, he just dis discussed the hydrogen atom. So there's one electron in this ground lowest energy level in the ground state, and it's considered very stable at that point. If there's a ground state, the other states are considered excited states, and they are unstable, places where the electron does not like to stay, and will jump back down to the ground state if it gets into these excited states. So how does it do that? If an electron that's traveling around here There's an electron traveling around at a lower energy level. If it gains some energy, whether it be from electricity or from a hammer hitting a lightsaber, anything, way of gaining electricity or gaining energy, it will jump from one energy level to the next energy level if it has enough energy to do so. The amount of energy required to do so is called a quantum of energy. And there's a certain amount of energy in this jump, a different amount of energy in this jump, and a large amount of, larger amount of energy in this jump from the ground state to the second excited state. So anytime an electron is going to jump to a higher energy level in the electron cloud, it needs to gain energy from some place. Now, remember that those energy levels are unstable. That's not where the electron's home is, where it is stable and happy. So, what they're going to do, they are going to jump back down to its ground state. So the electrons are jumping back down to the ground state, and when it does that, it releases energy. And while the energy here can be in many different ways, many different um, types of energy gained, whether it's electricity or it's um, some sort of friction, which, which could be, in the case of it releasing the energy, it always releases energy in a form of light. It depends on the size of the jump what type of light that is. So, the smaller jumps might be a lower energy light from the electromagnetic spectrum, like radio waves or microwaves or even infrared waves. Now we have a larger jump but not as large as this one, say we have a larger jump like this, that maybe is releasing some sort of visible light, maybe red light, or if it's higher energy, maybe green light, because remember, red light is the lowest of all the visible light waves. It goes Roy G. Bava, the red is the lowest, then it goes orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet being the highest energy visible light. This larger jump may be a different type of light, maybe an x-ray. Or they could all be visible light in just varying, varying colors. So it depends on the atom and the number of electrons it has as far as the jumps that those electrons are going to make. So let's just look at an example of hydrogen and the jumps that that electron makes. This figure is in your book, but Bohr works specifically with hydrogen. And you can see that all the jumps that an electron from hydrogen would make. So, it's one electron. E1 is considered the ground state. E2, the first excited state, next excited state, excited state. All the way up, there's six excited states, or five excited states above the ground state. What will happen is there's different jumps that those electrons can make. Notice here that the Lyman series, named after a scientist, same as Balmer and Passion, but the Lyman series are big jumps. Notice
just the size of the jumps compared to the other ones. And since they are big jumps of energy, lots of energy per jump that the electron moves from an excited state to a ground state, they are higher types of energy considered UV radiation. All right, so that would be to the right side of the electromagnetic spectrum. Here is the Balmer series, and with the Balmer series we have smaller jumps than the Lyman series. And with those smaller jumps, all four of those happen to be visible light. So that's less energy than UV with the, with the smaller jumps. And it should make sense since there's a less energy jump that it's a less energy type of electromagnetic radiation. The Passion series is even smaller jumps of energy. Notice how it's not always electrons immediately jumping down to the ground state, but as electrons jump from one excited state to another excited state, they also can give off light from there. Then from there, they can make other jumps. But notice how that is infrared, or IR radiation, and that is even lower energy than the visible light. So smaller jumps, smaller amount of energy. Let's take a look a little more about what's going on with hydrogen. And we will look at this in class, but if we have just a tube of hydrogen and and the light from the hydrogen goes through these slits, so it's just concentrating that light, and then a prism, it splits into its individual wavelengths. There are four visible waves from the Balmer series down here. There are four visible waves that they would be separated into. And we'll be able to see these four waves when we look at this tube in class. But it splits into those four visible waves. The ultraviolet is not visible to our eyes, so that's where the Lyman series fits. And the passion series, or infrared, is not visible to our eyes. So this is only for hydrogen. This is considered a line spectrum for hydrogen. Every single element has a different line spectrum of wavelength of light that its electrons emit. So we can identify elements based on this. It's like a fingerprint. Every element's different. If you ever wondered how we know the types of elements that are on the sun, it's from looking at the light that comes from the sun because we know that certain elements can only emit certain wavelengths of light. So let's look at the line spectrum of a couple other elements. Here's just a couple. Chlorine, obviously many more wavelengths emitted than Hydrogen, which only had four wavelengths in the visible spectrum. This has many, many wavelengths. And iodine has many wavelengths, not quite as many as chlorine. But these are like a fingerprint. There are no other elements that emit light like iodine does. There are no other elements that emit light like chlorine does. And these are the types of things that we can do to identify elements. It can be important in science to try to identify things, and forensics to try to identify what elements are present. So this is one method that could be used to see what elements are present in certain things. Be sure to jot all this information down in your notebook and bring it to class. So that's pretty cool. All the light that's around me coming out of the light bulbs above me is because of electrons moving hitting energy from the electricity running through them that's in those light bulbs and they jump up to higher energy levels and when they jump back down they're releasing light releasing photons of light which allows me to see that's pretty amazing pretty cool